I don't want to say I love pumpkin spice chai more than my husband, but I don't want to not say that. Hey guys, it's Zoe, and Noah is going to be joining us later on. He's hanging out down there. He's fine. He's calm. I'm going to leave him. Today, I'm going to be doing my October TBR. It's the first day of October, the best month in the whole year for multiple reasons, including my birthday, October 21st, in case anyone was wondering, and my third wedding anniversary, October 24th, if anyone was wondering, my youngest nephew's birthday on the 15th, just the fall vibes in general, pumpkin spice chives. I am an absolute hoe for those. It's kind of a problem. The leaves, the weather, at least here where I am. It's all fantastic. It's my favorite month out of the whole year. I'm so excited. I have seven books on my actual TBR, four writing books that I want to get through this month for Preptober. If you don't know what Preptober is, it's the month before NaNoWriMo National Novel Writing Month where you try and write 50,000 words in one month and Preptober is when we just spend the month of October prepping for the shit show. That is November. This TBR is mostly for the 1st to the 18th of the month when we're going on a trip to Nova Scotia. We're taking a road trip out to Nova Scotia. It's a 24 hour drive. So that's gonna be just a whole thing. But we're gonna be there for 10 days. I think that's the plan right now. But we leave on the 18th and I wanna get through the seven books that I have before then, because while we're there, I am dragging the entire family to Indigo in Halifax and spending probably way too much money. But you know what? I haven't bought books in a very long time. And, uh... I want to. Let's get into the seven books and then I will talk about my four writing books and then kind of what I'm planning on thinking about getting. I don't know if this is actually what's going to happen while in Nova Scotia. But I will be doing a book haul and everything later on in the month. And maybe a, maybe like an updated TBR. We'll see. I don't know yet. The first book that I have here is Meet Me in London by Georgia Toffolo. Toffolo? Toffolo? I'm not 100% sure. Sure. It's a Christmas romance and yes, it's likely way too early for Christmas, but I am that bitch that wants to celebrate Christmas year round because I love it. I was gonna start this one tonight and like I still might, but I might wait until we put up our Christmas tree when we come back from our trip at the end of October. No, I'm gonna start it right now. This follows Victoria and Oliver. Victoria has dreams of owning like a cute little clothing boutique in London, but her douchebag ex cheated her out of the entire business so she is stuck working her day job while also single during the holidays so it's just one whole hot fucking mess for her she hates it and to make matters worse a giant department store is opening up at the end of her road and she's like well that takes away all of my dreams of opening a cute little store because this giant conglomeration is going to be down at the end of the street and taking all of the marketing and the people shopping and it's gonna suck ass. Enter Oliver, the brains behind said giant fucking department store. His family owns the company Russell and & Co. And he is hating this whole idea of Christmas and festive at, at, what's the word I'm looking for? Atmosphere, the festivities, because he's been lying to his mother about having a girlfriend and like probably not the best idea but his father's health is declining and he just wants to make his family think that he's been settling down with someone and is ready to take over the company which is when he has a chance meeting with Victoria and they come up with this awesome plan she will pretend to be his girlfriend and he will showcase her designs in their department store so she gets you know a wider audience for everything and he gets his family off of his back and it's going well so well in fact that his family is so amped up for this that it goes from fake dating to fake engaged and they're like this is spiraled out of fucking control yes baby yes i know fake dating mama loves it you want to sit with mama yes and then a secret comes to light that victoria has been hiding that could just unravel absolutely everything those cannot be just farts this little shithead has the stinkiest farts. Absolutely awful, but you're so handsome. Next up, I don't know how I'm gonna do this with the baby on me, but you know what, it's fine. Do you wanna finish your hat? Or I'll figure something out. But next up, I have the last two books in the beautiful, beautiful series by Christina Lauren. I almost forgot that author. Those are two of my favorite people in the whole world. I love their books, they're amazing. A beautiful Secret follows Ruby and Nile. They work in a engineering company together, an architecture firm, something. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've read them. In London and they make their way over to New York and they have like an office romance outside of the office. And Beautiful follows Pippa and Jensen. All these characters you meet earlier on in the series. 
and the crew goes on a wine tour. I read the rest of the series in August and then I was gonna finish the series in September if I finished my TBR and I didn't quite get there so I'm gonna read it this month. And then we have two books that I am too much of a little bitch to read but I'm gonna try it anyways. We have All These Bodies by Kendara Blake. This is the summer of 1958. There's gruesome murders that sweep the Midwest. The victims are drained entirely of blood hate that. And a 15 year old girl is arrested and apparently sometimes the truth is as hard to believe as it is to find. And this just seems like I am going to um, cry from fear basically because this just sounds like I'm I'm gonna be terrified. I don't like horror, I don't like scary things, but you know what? I'm fucking doing it. I actually got this book today and the next one in a package from Frenzy. Hi! I just need this uh, box, okay? Absolutely not. Um, two things. I went like this. He clapped. My son did it right after. You fuck. And, he clapped. Uh, what a was bitch. I'm so impressed. You're a bitch. That's fine. Steal my boxes. I love you. Anyways. Love you. Love you. Um. Mmm. Just pump it right into my veins. Pumpkin spice chai. Oh, it's so spicy. I don't want to say I love pumpkin spice chai more than my husband but I don't want to not say that. Yeah, I got these in a box from Frenzy, the... There was a knot in my hair there. Wow, that was graceful. YA marketing bit for HarperCollins Canada. These f showed up um, from Frenzy Presents in August. Fantastic event. If you're a Canadian book influencer, if you are anything to do with books in Canada, you should definitely check them out. They're fantastic. Their events are amazing. The other book that I got from them, actually I got two copies of this book in the box. So I emailed Marisol. So we're gonna see if I can swap one of these out. But this one is White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. <laughs> so here's the thing. I have to read this book before we go away to Nova Scotia because at some point we're gonna be going to my brother and my sister-in-law's cottage that they have there. It's my sister-in-law's mom. It's her cottage, but they go there a lot. If I read it in Nova Scotia, I'm not gonna be able to sleep. As it is, I'm gonna have to sleep with the light on for at least three weeks after reading both of these two. But this one is Get Out Meets the Haunting of Hill House. I still have nightmares about Get Out every once in a while. Okay, it was years ago and I still do. And The Haunting of Hill House, I will never fucking watch because I'm too afraid. So why am I gonna read this? I don't know, I hate myself, clearly. She's set to be the Jordan Peele of YA fiction. This one is about Marigold, who's running from ghosts. Phantoms of her old life keep haunting her, but then she moves to Cedarville in the Midwest. Her mom's new job comes with a free house, one that she has to now share with her bratty 10-year-old stepsister, Piper. So this house on Maple Street looks picture perfect, but it has secrets and there's a fucking ellipsis before secrets which is terrifying enough on its own household items vanish doors open on their own lights turn off shadows walk past rooms voices can be heard in the walls and there's a foul smell seeping through the fucking vents i'm already terrified okay i'm in the library downstairs with i've got my lights up here but the lights in the library are off and the lights in the laundry room are off and the lights in the other fucking basement are off and there's a fireplace there, and there's just windows up there where it's fucking dark outside. I'm already afraid. And even worse, Piper keeps talking about a friend who wants Mary gone. No, thank you! No! It's not just Maple Street, it's all of Cedarville. They have secrets, and secrets always find their way through the cracks. I've got chills. I hate it. Oh, so I'm gonna read this, this one, and this one at high noon. Okay, it's gonna be bright as fuck outside. I'm not gonna read it anytime when it's dark out. I'm not doing that to myself because if I'm gonna do this anyways, it's not gonna be dark. It's not gonna be any sort of creepiness. And um, I'm not ashamed to say that I will snuggle my entire family and stay awake the whole night. Um, keep me watch over everyone because I fucking hate it. But I must say this cover is one of the most gorgeous things I've seen in a very long time. Oh, I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do this, but I'm gonna do this. Anyways, I fucking hate myself. It's fine. Bottle's done. There you go, bit cheeks. Bit cheeks. I wanted to call you butt cheeks, but I called them bit cheeks. He's so small. So handsome. I feel like I'm really far away. 
let's move in. Next up, I have For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. This was on my TBR from last month. I'm upset that I didn't get to this one because this is one of my most anticipated. It sounds fan-fucking-tastic. Red is the only second daughter that's been born in centuries and her only purpose in life is to be sacrificed to the wolf in the wilder wood in hopes that he will return the world's captured gods. The first daughter is for the throne, the second daughter is for the wolf. She's like kind of relieved to go because she has this dangerous power that she can't control and she knows that if she goes into this fucking wood she can't hurt everyone that she loves again. So some shit went down and she hurt someone and she is living with that guilt and hates it. So she's like, I will go sacrifice myself and everything will be fine. But then she gets into the Wilderwood and literally nothing is as she's been told. Because the wolf is a man, not a monster, and he's probably fucking hot. Yes, I know. You're in distress about this woman going and sacrificing herself. I know. Uh, her magic is a calling, not a curse. And if she doesn't learn how to use it, the monsters the gods have become will swile the... Sw swallow the wilder wood and the world whole. So she's been lied to. There's not like, horrible monsters. The monsters are the gods. What in the fuck? Draco! What was that, bubs? I'm super fucking pumped for that one. That one sounds fantastic. And then last up, we have The Last Debutante by Georgie Blalock. Blalock. This follows Valerie Devere Cole, who is the prime minister of the, the niece of Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain. She knows that she is going to be one of the last debutantes in England and the way of life that she and her family have lived is kind of coming to an end. She is the daughter of uh, a debt-ridden father and a neglectful mother and she sees that firsthand that war is imminent. This is set in 1939 before um, World War II really picks up. She knows that life sucks. But she reinvents herself as a carefree and glittering, glittering society woman, befriending other debutantes from England's aristocracy, as well as the vivacious Eunice Kennedy, daughter of the US ambassador. So she has a smashing success of a debut season, but she finds it impossible to ignore the world's troubles and her fear of loss and loneliness. So she's questioning how she's gonna navigate her new life when everything in her past has taught her that happiness and stability are as fragile as peace in 1939. So she's like, you know what? I'm going to forget everything shitty going on with too much champagne and too many waltzes because she knows that very soon she must find the inner strength to stand strong and carry on through the challenges of love, life, and war. Okay, so the other four books that I have here are The Writer's Little Helper by James V. Smith Jr. I remember going through this before, but I really don't remember what's in there. I have Plot Perfect by Paula Munier to help me try and come up with a fucking plot. And I've got You've Got a Book in You, A Stress-Free stress Guide to Writing the Book of Your Dreams by Elizabeth Sims. I've gone through all these before, but I honestly don't remember much about them and I'm just gonna try and go through them just to see if I get it inspired before October ends and NaNoWriMo really starts. And the last one here is The Golden Bow by James George Fraser. This is a lot to do with superstitions and things, which is more research for my book because it's set in a world where superstitions come true. Like I said, I want to get these done before we go to Nova Scotia, or at least the drive, because I'm going to listen to some audiobooks because I think we're going to attempt to drive straight through. It's a 24 hour drive from Tecumseh to Kingston. It's going to be a long fucking drive with an almost three month old and an 18 month old and we're bringing Tyson too. And then in Nova Scotia with my brother and the fam, we are going to be plotting my book. I want it to be part of a larger series, ideally like five books. So when we go there, we are going to put all of my subplots, all of my character arcs and everything onto giant bristle boards and then hang them up on the wall back there that's behind my desk. I will be able to fit like five or six bristle boards straight across and like too stacked so I could fit a large fucking plot on there. I'm gonna color code the fuck out of everything and it's gonna be amazing! I'm gonna love it. But we're gonna have some drinks together, the four of us, me, Kurt, my brother, and my sister-in-law, and possibly my mom and her boyfriend if they show up. But we don't know if they're gonna be able to come yet. So I'm gonna try and read the writing books while we're in Nova Scotia and before a little bit too. And like I said, I'm gonna go shopping in Halifax and try to pick up some books there. Likely we'll be getting a lot of romance. I've been in the mood for romance, but also I've been in the mood for YA fantasy because Beasts of Prey has really gotten me in that mood. I 
fucking loved it. It was amazing. 10 out of 10. Go buy that book right now. Check it out from a library. Do something. You need to read it. The seven books, I'm super, super excited for all of them. I got a couple of rereads, got some romance, got some ones that I am excited for, but terrified at the very same time. More terrified than excited, I think, but we're gonna do it anyways. Mr. Fuskanoids is getting Fuskanoid, so I gotta go play some music for him. That is it. Let me know down below in the comments what you're reading this month, if you read any of these ones and what you thought about them, or if that's just too much and you don't have a lot of time, drop some hearts down below, preferably purple ones, because that's my favorite color. As always, to stay updated with my current reads and how I'm feeling about them, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads, all at Zoe's All Booked, which I will leave linked down below in the description box. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share the video, and don't forget to hit the little bell icon so you can get notified anytime I post a new video. I hope you all have a wonderful day and get at least a little bit of uninterrupted reading time. I love you awesome nerds and I will see you in the next one. And Noah will likely be here again because he's my little bud. He's my filming buddy.